the cause of all the problems. He's the representation of all the problems. That's what he is. He is a living representation of all the problems. How there's a separate system of justice for, for people like him. How, how there's a separate sit, a set of rules for people like him. How the world has to sit by and watch in horror as he exists, as he exists and gets away with it. I do want to say this. I want to say that, like, I don't know. I, I didn't, I, I woke up obviously horrified, disgusted, and still am, and probably will continue to be. And yeah, like a lot of people, I'm like, well, you know, Maybe I'll just uh, spend the day, you know, running around in a park with Chico and, and, you know, ignoring the internet and that kind of stuff. But, like, every time there's something like this, it uh, it doubles my resolve. It, it makes me twice as angry and, and, or a million times as angry. It makes me want to fight even harder, uh, you know, for everything that we care about. And the reality is, is that liberalism, especially fucking neoliberal policies under capitalism... They were never going to save us. The the whole status quo shit, that can keep you safe for a, a prolonged period of time. It's why a lot of people, especially if you're in vulnerable minority groups, you know, LGBTQ+, plus, uh, you, you sometimes feel that, like, well, life can be safe under the libs. You know, they, they, they at least don't openly and outwardly, uh, you know, vilify and attack queers in the same way that, like, you know, the far right does. Because, boy, do they ever... Boy, is that just like a centerpiece, just concentrating all their hatred into vulnerable minorities. And reality is, is that, no, neoliberalism will not save us. All these systems, they're, they're just exacerbating all of these problems. You you can't turn off the rest of the world. And, and going along as they are, and the system is working as they're supposed to, yeah, it, it deeply benefits the West to, to, to have all of this. We get PS5s, we get cheap cell phones, we get all that kind of stuff. Well... A lot of other people around the world, they woke up uh, and their situation did not really dramatically change. I'm not saying that Trump is not going to be worse on a lot of foreign policy. I mean, it's going to be a disaster for Palestinians. It's going to be a disaster for Ukrainians. It's going to be a disaster for a lot of people. But like I saw posts from some folk, like someone posted, I woke up in Haiti and things are as horrible today as they were yesterday. You know, Bizan from Gaza made a video the other day that was like, this is an election for Americans to feel uh, good or bad about something, but nothing changes for us. We get we wake up every day and we're getting bombed while we're being starved, while we're being killed, while we're being sniped, while we're being shot. Same thing with people in Sudan. Same thing with people in the Democratic Republic of Congo. You know, they, they, they wake up uh, and they, they have to go mine the minerals that make this stream possible. And I get to talk about it from the comfort of my cozy little room here with my adorable dog by my side. But that's the fucking, that's the reality, is that we take so much of this for granted, but that's the reality is under liberal policies. That's the, re the reality is under uh, capitalism, is that, yeah, a, lo a lot of that safety and security that you feel uh, does come at the expense of a lot of uh, people in the rest of the world. And you can't just turn that off like a lot of people have. You can't just be like, yeah, I mean, like, it's sad, but fuck them. Because at the end of the day, I'm more worried about, you know, what's happening here. I'm more worried about what's happening to me. And it's like, we we're all interconnected, this entire planet. I mean, the 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 reality is, is that, like, the people who were suffering yesterday under our policies, our being the West, uh, are still suffering today. Are they going to suffer more? Yes, they're, they're going to suffer more. But that doesn't change their lives. You don't have to go as far as other countries. I, I saw someone post that, like, you're worried about living under fascism. How do you think every single homeless person on the street feels or wonders what they live under? Because it's nothing. They, they, they get rounded up by the police every day. Just, just near where I live is some of the, the highest concentrations of drug addiction and poverty. And every single tent city that pops up, well, they get to experience their version of fascism in that the police come by, destroy their homes, take all their possessions, and push them into another area where they die. And that's just what they deal with every single fucking day. And that's the reality. And that's something that's happening in our backyards. Like, literally in my backyard. Like, I can step outside and I can see it. And that's and that's the world. Um, things can get worse. It's one of the reasons I've always been an advocate, and I was before this election, about pick your enemy. Choose. It's easier to battle up against uh, milk toast liberals than it, than it is against far-right authoritarians. 
Uh, and uh, this is going to be a very, very horrifying four years where immigrants are going to most likely suffer the most in the United States, uh, as will LGBTQ plus people, as will visible minorities, as will people of color, black people, indigenous people, etc. And it's no surprise to me whatsoever that, again, all these same groups are the ones who are now getting blamed for this disaster of an election. An election, by the way, every single read that I've seen online saying that, like, well, this was this was uh, just because, uh, you know, the Democrats uh, are, are too left. They're too they're too woke. Uh, all, all that kind of shit. That's not what happened. Look at the fucking numbers. Yeah, the final counts aren't in. But this, the winner of this American election was apathy. It, it was like, it was exactly what I fucking thought in my heart and, and what I said, you know, in my own streams. But then I would go onto panels with other people and on shows with other people. And I, and I kept on uh, suppressing that in, in the, you know, I, I, who wants to be a downer? Who wants to, who wants to sit there, you know, when other people are getting all libbed up and getting all excited and then getting all hopiumed about everything that is taking place and being like yeah you know what this this is a sure thing we're, we're looking good blah 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 and at the end of the day americans don't really care that much about like you know foreign policy they don't really care that much about palestinians they don't really care about these issues look at the the meat and potatoes look at the the exit polls look at what every single person is saying they, they care deeply about election integrity uh they care about abortion rights uh they care about the economy that's that's the big three that's that's what it is and I kept saying, because I had just seen what happened recently at my own lo local provincial election, that you cannot have a campaign that inspires barely anyone and hope the status quo can lead you to victory. It, it just doesn't fucking work. It, it, it was an almost, almost down to one single seat in the provincial election in B.C., a disaster because the party, the NDP, the BC NDP, pivoted to the center right on um, on very key issues like the environment, uh, like homelessness and addiction, uh, and like you know that erodes your base. That that does not galvanize people. That does not inspire people. Doesn't bring them out. And now looking at the American election, I mean, now yeah, uh, every single group that you can expect is being vilified. This is the fault of Arabs. This is the fault of the Muslims and the voters in the swing states who didn't vote for her. Uh, this is the fault of the third parties. Uh, this is this is the fault of black voters. Man, this is really the fault of Latino voters. Did you see how many Latino voters voted for Trump? Can you believe it? Can you believe that happened? Can you can you believe that so many of them voted for Trump? Uh, well, I hope they enjoyed the next four years, or I hope Muslims enjoy the next four years, or I hope Arabs enjoy the next four years, I hope black people enjoy the next four years, I hope indigenous people enjoy the next... I hope queer folk, queer folk, who didn't do anything this election because they, they were just so high and mighty about it, I hope they enjoy the next four years. I hope all the people who voted for Kamala but did so reluctantly or, or you know, uh, with a nuanced take or just... Uh, with a, a slightly, hey, by the way, this sucks, but I'm I'm doing it because I have to, because I know that the alternative could be worse, but I can't campaign for her, I can't I can't donate to the Democratic Party. It's all bullshit. None of those were the reasons why they failed. It was apathy. Apathy won. Apathy won this election on both sides. Like if three million voters, and I know the the final vote tallies aren't yet, but if three million le voters voted less voted less for Trump than the last election, if 14 million voters voted less for the Democrats than the last election, that's apathy. That's neither party is, is pitching something that is driving people out. Ne neither party is proposing something that is driving people out. It just turned out that the Democrats' pitch was worse and then less people were driven out on that end of the scale. And if, if you want to look towards a demographic, well, guess what? White women... White men, overwhelmingly, Trump. Not not the groups that are often vilified. I don't see them uh, being plastered all over the internet the way it's like, I can't believe the Muslim voters uh, decided not to vote for her in Michigan. I'm, I'm sure they'll enjoy the next uh, four years when the Muslim ban starts up. Enjoy that. What, what, what does that get you? What, what, where does that get you? 
uh, the black men who were vilified not only now uh, in the post uh, campaign but during the campaign itself condescended to i might add just men in general too i don't know which strategist thought like hey by the way we need to run ads where it shows a black dude and then he's like talking to a bunch of ladies and on paper he's handsome he's got a good job but as soon as he says he's not going to vote they pop all the balloons that show that like you're just not going to get any pussy bro and because like you know you don't vote ro proper you don't get laid that's how it is this is all men care about hey here's another ad dudes uh here's a guy having sex but then like right afterwards you can't have it a, an abortion or a plan b or you can't even use a condom uh because this is all you can about is sex and getting laid so this is our appeal to you all, all this bullshittery when it's like th those are still groups that voted for the democrats those are still groups that voted like when it comes to black people overwhelmingly for the democrats you can say maybe a little less so than the last election cycle but still overwhelmingly for the democrats while getting absolutely no blame blame anyone but the fucking democrats I, it feels like you know, it, it, like when, when something like this goes down, blame anything but uh, people who are going to continuously blame anyone. But, you know, I'm speaking like I, I, an entire generation of people horrified, horrified at the things they see every day when they turn on their televisions or computer screens, horrified at the dead children, horrified at the bombs, the screams, the, the parents crying, all that shit. And to tell them I'm speaking. Excuse me, I'm speaking. Or to see the DNC, right? Like, you, you, I, I'm, I got all the numbers up here. Like, we can go through them. We can, we can look at the breakdown and, and we can talk about that and all that kind of shit and, and go through it bit by bit. But the reality of the situation is that you can see, and just like I thought, when everything was all exciting, oh, Joe Biden, that genocidal racist war criminal, he's stepping down, she's she's stepping in, and a lot of people who may not have even liked her at any point in her career, myself included, suddenly were just giving in to the fun and the memes and the coconut tree shit and the, oh, we are unburdened by what has been. You think you fell out of a coconut tree? The outpouring of, of all of a sudden just an excited generation, like, holy shit, maybe there could be hope and change. People were saying, this feels just like Obama, and in some ways, it did. It did, and they squandered it all by the time the DNC rolled around by, again, ignoring people who are justifiably horrified by what is going on, appealing to the right, appealing to the fucking the Dick Cheney's, like, <laughs> disastrous. Does that, who the hell was the Dick Cheney shit for, you know? But, like, it's it's one of those things where, like, I'm... I'm talking about this i'm watching the train wreck as it's happening uh and and you know the 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 hopium and, and uh you know the libbed up i guess version that some people started to believe like a single seltzer pull comes out and everyone's like oh, okay it's it's drover yeah you know she's she's gonna flip iowa this thing is so done uh and it's like you know who who's accurate were the rest of the pollsters the the, the polling wasn't that far off they said it was a coin toss it was very close and ultimately, it went more towards Trump than it did towards her. He just etched past the 270 into 277 territory. Uh, did, did the independents come out? Did the independent voters, were they swayed? Were, were the, the, the moderates uh, swayed by the Liz Cheney shit? Uh, or once again, was, was going further to the right on immigration was 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 uh, appealing to independent moderates and and center right voters by trying to have this ridiculous big net where near the the end of it they were like we're, we're almost at the ultimate size the the purest Voltron of uh, fucking uh, war criminals we gotta get Bush where the fuck is the Bush endorsement come on Kamala HQ do your duty Bush it is time to endorse like again this this stuff. Uh, <laughs> It's not inspiring. It, it doesn't. It doesn't drive people out. Now you can look at that. The 14 million less voters uh, for the Democrats in the last election cycle, after the Democrats have done three, three, like three in a row, terrible candidates. If you look at Hillary. A terrible candidate. If you look at Joe Biden, well, he won, yes, but why did Joe Biden win? Did, did did we learn anything from that? Was was America shocked and horrified by the results of COVID, by what was happening, by the mismanagement of it, by uh, a president who is cracking down aggressively on civil rights movements, on the Black Lives Matter movement, all, all of these things suddenly galvanizing people out that fucking hell, we have to do everything in our power right now to stop this man. Uh, he is he's a monster. He's an absolute monster. And then, uh, you know, the, the, this is this is uh, and even in that election cycle, you can you can make an argument for it. They did a lot more of an appeal 
to progressives and to leftists and to to you know a changing uh, demographic within the United States by by appointing you know them to to better positions like Sanders for example and putting them into the inner circle and in this one those same figures were just used as as like this is a taken for granted thing as in all right so you know you've, you've been allowed into the inner circle now Bernie we need you to campaign in this way AOC we need you to campaign in this way and all this kind of stuff and and the idea that there's just like well yeah but there was just no political viability for anyone who was uh you know anti-war because uh at the end of the day uh you know you don't want to be associated with hamas uh you don't want to be uh tarnished by being some kind of far leftist extremist uh far leftism is is uh, dead at the end of the day now the democrats have to pivot even further right like you can see that the, the mbc uh videos that are coming out right now that that's some of the headlines uh, i believe now the democrats have to learn from this and uh, we have to move further to the center, which to someone who's not American, by the way, just looking at how skewed the Overton window is by the United States uh, makes that just utterly, utterly comical if it wasn't so tragic and sad. But like the, the reality of the Democrats moving to uh, the center or, or, or pivoting more to the center when in this election cycle they were appealing more to the right is what was happening. You, they were trying to outflank the right on immigration. Uh, on on an issue there that is definitely going to polarize uh, a, 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 an electorate of which whom a lot of Americans are immigrants or or the descendants of immigrants. Like unless your ancestors were brought over by by you know slaveholders or you were an indigenous person or the descendant of an indigenous person, it is a nation of immigrants. Like th those are the the two categories where it doesn't make up the vast majority of Americans being immigrants from different countries at different periods of time and and all that kind of shit. And now, if the lesson from this is that, well, the Democrats got to go even further right, they got to drop all of these minorities they keep uh, advocating or talking about on the behalf of or not talking about. Like, I, I saw, like, liberals uh, and pundits instantly going after trans people, like, showing, showing you how like tenuous the uh, alliance or protection uh, of minority groups can be when instantaneously it's like you know that they really got to drop the whole trans issue i mean it's just not a winner clearly the other side is is won this they got to drop the whole uh anti-wokeness pro-wokeness like at the end of the day it's, it's just like they're, they're, they're it's just not a, a winning strategy none, none of these kind of things win and it's like the democrats weren't running on that this cycle though if anything like Kamala was being so careful in that one interview. It's like, well, what would you do when it comes to, you know, trans rights and trans protection? I would follow the law. That's again an appeal to the center to center right, not to scare anyone or isolate them to be like, well, I believe in the dignity and humanity of all of all human beings. And I will fight tirelessly uh, to advocate for the rights of all gay people, of all trans people, of all gay kids, of all trans kids, of all asexuals, of all bisexual. Like, no, no, it was it was not that it was like, I will follow the law. And it's like, OK, well, again. That, that is an appeal to people because you don't want to scare them. You don't want to scare people who might be like, oh, is she for the whole, you know, uh, sex changes in schools thing and, and operations? No, no, she, all right, well, okay, based on that, uh, her appeal is that she's going to uh, follow the law kind of thing. But, like, the people who uh, hate you, hate you. They, they, the people who hate the Democrats and hate trans people and hate queer people and hate minorities – they all already hate you. They're, they're not willing to be galvanized or bought over with a, oh, okay, she doesn't seem as radical as I was led to believe. So now I, I don't have to, you know, maybe uh, cast my vote for Donald Trump. I can, I can cast my vote for her. When the pattern is very, very clear on these issues, you need to drive voters out. You need to inspire inspire people you need to make a movement possible you need to galvanize people everyone kept on talking about obama do you know why that first obama era like election was so inspiring and so exciting and stuff like that because we had come just from and, and we being globally because the the iraq war was something that like you know bush tried to pull every other country into and then canada refused but the uk was like hey tony blair oh yes i would love to please my opportunity sir um 
but he tried to get everyone on, you know, on board with this axis of evil versus the allies who were going to do the Iraq uh, invasion post uh, the Afghanistan one. And then in that, it was a disastrous, disastrous, uh, you know, clusterfuck of uh, unimaginable magnitudes. And the horrors and atrocities that were taking place in there, that was during the time when we didn't have the same access to the internet and the same kind of four uh, or 5G uh, smartphones that we do now. So we didn't see it with our own eyes every single day, uh, the mass slaughter of civilians there that were taking place and this time directly at the hands of American soldiers as they were bombing their houses and kicking their doors in and doing all these kind of fucking atrocities and war crimes we didn't see it every day but it took a very long time until people started seeing the truth as it came out in stories of torture centers of fucking uh, children getting uh, murdered of, of women being sexually assaulted and, and violated and all this other horrifying stuff once it started to come out and pour out that combined with the 2008 financial collapse and crisis and the whole world was so disgusted with neocons, with neocon policies, with Dick fucking Cheney, with, with the Dick Cheneys of the world and all of them. And along came Obama, and he was talking about hope and change, and it was inspiring. Even if you weren't an American, like Canadians were, were in tears at his speeches, listening to that man speak and thinking he didn't vote for the Iraq war. He's against this shit. He's going to turn everything around. He's going to really reduce the amount of fucking forever wars, the war on terror, all of this American imperialist bullshit. Obama can be the hope and change that we need. And yes, parts of that were a complete lie. In fact, he actually decided to ramp up, uh, you know, the technology became more readily available. He decided to ramp up drone strikes and all that kind of stuff. But that is what galvanized people. That, that is what fucking made it possible for in a racist ass country like America, a black man to become the president of the United States, because not only was he just like an, an unbelievable orator, he was inspiring people that he was getting people to knock on doors. You want another example? Bernie Sanders, independent senator from Vermont, an old man coming out of nowhere. Being like, yes, I'm, I'm going to run as an independent candidate for the president of the United States. Do you remember how fucking, like, ratchet uh, his, like, uh, announcement speech was? Where it's, it's just, like, leftist audio happening all over the place. And he had the little tiny stand outside. And he was like, you know, I, I'm going to be running for president and all that kind of stuff. And what happened? His messaging... Very, very clear, very concise, maybe not anywhere close to as good an, or an orator as Obama was, but the whole 99% versus the 1% in the in the climate, you know, directly after, uh, you know, all of the Occupy movement and, and, and the, 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 the understandable anger frustration that the world started to have at capitalism. Like riding that wave into an opportunity where, yes, uh, Hillary Clinton thinks that she's owed the presidency. Yes, she's a horrifying war hawk who has been, you know, just uh, an absolute disaster for a lot of different countries, specifically NATO's one you can point towards. But here is an example of someone who's going to come forward and be like, hey, there can be a different path. We, we can choose socialism over barbarism. We are the 1% versus the 99%. They, they have all of the wealth, but we have all the workers and all of the power. And wow. That really galvanized and inspired people up until the point where, yes, eventually Hillary did win and he did what he was supposed to do. He he campaigned for her and, and he put his you know best foot forward and he did everything in there. But then in the next election cycle, he came even closer, even though he had had a heart attack, even though he had been like, you know, in, in a lot of ways consistently vilified by all of these neoliberal Democratic insiders and, and, and fucking uh, like complete clowns. The, he was still inspiring people because that message was still resonating with people. And yes, the coveted independent, the coveted non-voter, they were activated. He was actually starting to galvanize those groups. And then he was getting people to volunteer for him. He was getting all of these political ideologies because you can tell now, have you seen how batshit the, the makeup of the original Bernie Sanders team is today as they're all over the map? There's some of them where you're like, oh yeah, they're pretty decent. And there's other ones where you're like, what the fuck? How did these people all work together? How did they all collectively band together to make a political apparatus that came this fucking close to challenging one of the deepest capitalist backed institutions of the two major political parties of the United States so much so that they had to destroy it 
They, they had to destroy it, break it up, and do it the same thing that they do to fucking, you know, uh, civil rights movements and turn them I- into uh, charities. And, and that's the, the exact idea at play again here. Let's coalesce all the different groups together. Let's ride with Biden. Let's push them all together. Let's, let's you know, break Bernie Sanders' knees uh, politically and metaphorically. And then uh, we got ourselves a candidate, and that candidate will win. And that's a proof to us that, yes, uh, unfortunately, the policies and ideas ideas of Bernie Sanders are extreme. They're leftist. They're radical. What you need is your good old fashioned war fucking thirsty uh, neoliberal like Joe Biden, because uh, that's what people feel safe with. And he makes America feel safe. And as long as it's an old white man, everyone's going to go and vote for him now and then look at all this kind of stuff while ig- ignoring uh, like the the repulsion and the rejection of Donald Trump. That was uh, the the Biden election, not the love adoration. Like, don't get me wrong. Yes, there are people who are riding with Biden. There are people who love him. And there are people who are just like, oh, well, he reminds me of the Obama era. And like, there's definitely going to be that in the voter demographic. But it was more than anything a rejection of what Trump and what Trump's policies had been doing to the country. And then once again, what are you offering? Like, did you think that people who watch their families get blown up every day are going to take the time to have a nuanced take on the trolley problem? Do you think they're going to be able to sit there and make the calculation? One that I myself would propose. You are choosing your enemy. This one one is going to be much more difficult than the other. But please, to the, to the you know millions, millions of voters who are outraged and disgusted, I'm speaking. And yes, uh, this war needs to end. Israel's right to defend itself. Uh, the hostages need to be returned. First and foremost, that's what we care about. The hostages being returned. Uh, Israel's right to defend itself. Uh, and then uh, Palestinians uh, should should have a right to uh, living in, in peace, security, and dignity. And that's uh, going to be the message. We'll put that on repeat. Uh, no, uh, I'm not going to uh, you know allow anyone to speak. I'm not going to platform anyone at the DNC. We're going to let every other single group of the Big Ten speak, except for the people who, again, are very, very angry about this. He's there is a entire mass movement taking place where students are willing to risk getting permanent criminal records, which could make them unemployable for the rest of their lives while they are at institutions, maybe in, in great debt. I don't know if, uh, you know how many of them versus how many are not uh, in, you know encumbering student debt to be in those schools. But yeah, this is important enough to them that they are willing to risk getting a criminal record because they are going to protest their school uh, being complicit. They are going to protest themselves being complicit. They are going to uh, camp out until the point where they might receive physical violence from the police, from the police state. They could re- uh, be arrested or beaten or, or, or sprayed, all that kind of shit. But that is what's galvanizing an entire generation right now. We're not going to tap into that. We're, we're going to try... And, and just calm it down while at the same time trying to scoop it up. And then that, that we're going to go forward. And, and yeah, that, what do you offer? I'm not that different than Joe Biden. Except for the fact that I am going to appoint a Republican to my candidate. Yeah. My, sorry, my cabinet. But that's, that, that's, that's, that's going to be the idea. So I, the lessons to learn from this, first and foremost... Uh, stop doing the finger pointing. This is for everyone, myself included, at the people who are not responsible for this. It's like, it's grotesque to log onto the internet and, and, and to see and watch people be like, fucking, if it wasn't for the Muslim voters, uh, goddamn, if it wasn't for the Arab voters, uh, if it wasn't for the fucking, you know, all those Latino voters, like, oh, uh, yeah, really, really hope you enjoy living under fucking Trump's America. Oh, enjoy that. And enjoy doing that, right? Vote shaming doesn't work. You, you can't vote shame people into again thinking that like, okay, well, I'm, I'm just going to, I'm going to do a trolley problem. I have been staring at dead kids' corpses for, for a year, every day. And, and, and some people have family members who are there watching die in real time. But hey, I'm, I'm going to have to, to just suck that up and, and do my democracy today. And, and I'm, I'm going to trolley problem this. And I'm, I'm going to get in there and, and truly, yeah, 14 million less people went out and voted and and it, uh, it does not surprise me does doesn't surprise me the, the 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 idea of consistently trying to push for status quo mixed with a little more right wing policies mixed with a uh, a crumb of we might be able to be a little bit better on foreign policy but there's no assurances i'm definitely not committing to an arms embargo anything like that well yeah 
I agree with anyone who thinks that like Trump is going to be worse. He is. This is the absolute horrifying reality of this whole thing. This is another reason why I I, I, I am also grotesque and 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 you know disgusted at seeing keyboard clown shoes leftists now being like you get what you deserve enjoy yeah this was a rebuke haha <laughs> now we have demonstrated that you know no one will ever support you know uh, the Kamala neoliberal policies Yo Gallant just got fired prior to this uh Benjamin Netanyahu is is wanting Trump to win and has been now putting the pieces into play and is witnessing what is happening and is now setting everything up to fucking take on the West Bank to to destroy what little of what is considered Palestine in 2024 uh and 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 remove it from the face of the earth while we'll actively uh, you know, uh, cleansing uh, the the remaining fucking children of Gaza, and and yes, that is what is going to happen under Trump. This is that's not a cause for celebration. This this, this Democrats are not going to learn fucking jack shit from your weird online posts and, and protest vote where where you're going online being like ah yeah well this this was just to show them but now no I'm sure they've learned their lesson. They don't learn their lesson. They, they like you would think that the lessons would have been learned by now and, and they would have realized and analyzed uh, the elements of, of the last handful of election cycles that make them potentially viable and, and and not you know what we gotta really appeal once again to the war criminal demographic is the definitely the group of people who are uh, you know uh, maybe un, unassuaged by uh, her and her policies and the potential for her to become the next president of the United States uh, in, in this endless race to the bottom it's it's going to be fucked and that's that's just the reality there's there's like there's no way to 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 try and make this sound as if it is a, a better situation than it is uh, because again the American empire uh, under worse management, under more authoritarian management, or even under a fucking potential dictatorship, well, that's a disaster. That's a disaster for Canadians. That's a disaster for Palestinians. That's a disaster globally for, for everybody. Now, the other thing is this. If she had won, that doesn't change the exact same thing that I would be telling you today outside of the rant about, like, you know, shame on you fucking the Democrats uh, across the board for everything that you've done to make this entire situation possible, that wouldn't change anything from the reality that is our work doesn't stop. By we, I mean all of us who want to be working for a better world. That's something that we got to do our entire lives. It does not happen with an election. It never was going to. Even if, and I know I'm, I'm going to be in the forever, I really wish we were in the timeline where Bernie Sanders had fucking won because if Bernie Sanders had just fucking won, so much of this wouldn't be happening right now. But that's just not real life, and that's not the reality we live in. And as much as I, I would love to be able to just uh, you know do Doctor Strange and, and go into that timeline and, and see what the world could have been, this is the one that we're in, and these are the cards that were dealt, and so we have to do what we can to make the world a better place. And that will not happen with a single... American election or a single uh, American victory or a single American loss the it sucks that Adam Conover of all you know the people who had put videos out about this got shit on so much uh, for saying by the way you should you know pick the lesser of two evils it'll be easier to organize etc because I don't know if they watched the second half of his video because the second half of his video is so very important where he says guess what she wins she loses that doesn't change this part of the video and this point in that I live in LA. I got really, really sad at seeing homeless people in my area all the fucking time, every day. So I wanted to do something about it. So I organized and I organized with organizations locally who help support homeless people and help give them food, blankets, shelter, that kind of stuff. I then organized locally to elect people into my local city council as well as into my local mayoral races who are going to try and work for problem uh, housing for solutions. And because we galvanized and, and we worked together at a local election where there's very little turnout as opposed to these big, you know, very loud American elections that dominate the news globally 
globally. If you don't live in America, yes, it, every other country in the world, if you are in, in, in any part of the world, is talking about the American election. You, you are the empire. Uh, you know, the, the other superpowers of the world don't really have the same pendulum swing that you do. China, for example, doesn't have elections, not in the way that, you know, America does. So, yeah, it, it, gal it, it, is, it is wall to wall coverage. But local small elections usually, while they have uh, way less coverage in media and, and way less excitement or even way less interest, directly impact your lives way more in a lot of ways sometimes than those big elections. No, not for the military industrial complex, that kind of stuff. But we're talking about locally, they can affect the police budgets. They can affect uh, what the budgetary priorities will be for your city, for your council, how your city operates and all that kind of stuff. And it's for that reason I've been advocating for so long for people, especially leftists, to get involved at that level. And there is a direct example he can point towards. The same thing, the guy who edits the surf dogs, who does uh, the cartoons, these, these little doggos here, his name's Kyle. He works with the Democratic Socialists in Seattle. They have been working for a very, very long time at the local level to try and, yes, improve the lives of people. And they've had a lot of successes in that arena. Progressive policies, if not worded as in, I am Lord of Woke trying to uh, wokeify the wokeness or something like that, uh, the way the right tries to tarnish any kind of civil rights movement or movements towards, uh, you know, ending oppression or stuff like that. But progressive policies themselves, minimum wage, $15 minimum wage, that happens to be because of an independent that they had galvanized and worked towards getting elected into the Seattle City Council. Uh, rent freeze and rent control, again, things that they had successfully achieved by galvanizing and getting an independent into the City Council, becoming sanctuary cities, becoming cities that are aligned directly with Palestine. Again, things that I have achieved by working at the state, uh, sorry, at the local uh, and city level. Uh, these are achievable goals. The same thing can apply to LGBTQ plus organizations that you might be joining or that you might be working with. They can achieve real things. They can, they, they can actually work towards improving people's lives and material conditions. In this election, there was not a decided rebuke of wokeness. There was, there was not a, a rejection of any uh, progressive uh, policies. In fact, I've got a whole bunch of examples here of a lot of down-ballot measures that won uh, specifically because they were very progressive, because they were things that either secured minimum wage, achieved paid sick leave, enshrined trans rights, enshrined uh, reproductive health for people who give birth. Uh, all these kind of things did win in different parts of the United States yesterday. It is a complete myth that there has now been an outright rejection of anything that could potentially improve people's lives from the leftist perspective. And anyone who's telling you that, or anyone who's trying to get you to think uh, the country has just once again moved even further for the right. Now, now it's even more far right. And, 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 and you know, even, even people who weren't before part of the entire white supremacist movement have now joined forces with the white supremacist movement. And, and they're all sexists and they're all racists. And every single one of them is just working towards, uh, you know, improving uh, the lives of blah, blah, blah. This is, is never going to allow anyone to properly analyze why people like Donald Trump come to power. It's not just in America. It's globally. It almost happened here in the province I live in. And we're supposed to be super woke. We're supposed to be super progressive, but we almost had the far right come into power provincially in the provincial election from a guy who had a campaign where he denied climate change. He said kids were going to eat bugs. He talked consistently uh, and vilified indigenous people. Uh, he was talking about removing indigenous rights. All of these things, abhorrent, racist. He had all these candidates who were saying abhorrent and racist things. And as it was getting close to the election, he only lost by one fucking seat days after the election recount happened and all that kind of stuff. And it's not because the, the majority, half the population suddenly were just waking up and they wanted to vote for racism. It's not, it's not like people wake up first thing. Like there are people, yes, who are very racist and America is very racist. Canada is very racist. All these countries are still very fucking racism. Racism has not gone away. It's woven into everything. It's woven into the literature. It's woven into the movies. It's woven into culture. It's woven into society. We're all trying to unpack it constantly, but that's the reality of it. But that's not why people would get up and be like, I can't wait to go vote for the racist. People I know who who spoke to their friends, who, who had friends who voted conservative, when they asked them, why did you vote conservative? Not a single one said, because I hate women, be, be, because I hate indigenous people. That's why I did it. It was because, oh, I was worried about all the homelessness. Oh, it's all the drug addicts on the street. I thought they would get rid of it. 
Oh, well, yeah, I just, I, I thought that he was going to make taxes lower or, or something like that. Yeah, that's that's why I went and did it. I, I, di I didn't know, actually. It's just funny you say that, that, that he's an extreme racist. I'm, I was not, I was not fully aware of that, but yeah, that was, that was the reason. And on the other end, the guy who, who should be getting support, who should be getting uh, people excited, who should be getting uh, David Eby, who should be getting his base of electoral, uh, you know, candidates all, all like jazzed up for him. They're all alienated and disgusted that he pivoted to the center right. I, I, I spoke to people in behind the scenes. I'm not going to reveal their names, but I spoke to, to people who would have been volunteering on his campaign or people who would have been working uh, towards getting him elected. And a lot of them had dropped out. They, they straight up were just like, he's, he's dropping the carbon tax. He's saying he wants forced institutionalization. Like, these are right-wing policies. He's, he's pivoting to the right because he sees that there could be a potential to get more people elected there. And my warning to America was like, please, for the love of fuck, stop doing this. Stop thinking that by appealing to the center, you're going to like shave off this juicy chunk of right wingers who are suddenly going to recognize, ah, okay, well, she's actually more Republican on immigration. Oh, she wants to build the wall. See, I, I wanted someone who would build the wall. Now that I hear that she's going to build the wall, I, I'm with her. I, I, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, team up. You know, with that properly to in, in like, I, I don't know if you were all watching me the day that Doug Ford in Ontario, uh, he's the premier there. He came forward. Uh, the news of the day should have been all over that they had just gutted funding for mental health programs and, and by an enormous degree. And that is going to be devastating for that province. And this is what the media should report on. That You have a responsibility to do this. Focus on this, please. All the major newspapers and the major media networks and, and all the legacy media over there were focused on him giving every single person in the province $200. That was the headlines. That that was the Toronto Star. That was the fucking the, the newscast clips that I could find. There were not video footage uh, of people inside Parliament being like, if you take away people's access to mental health, if you limit the amount of resources people have for access to mental health, this has devastating effects on the consequences. How hypocritical of all of you to constantly vilify people with mental health when at the end of the day you aren't willing to fund the resources to help them. You are sick. That's what should be talked about. That's what needs to be talked about. That's why normies, for the most part, who aren't tapped into politics, who are now Googling days before, you know, uh, who, what are the policies of these two candidates kind of things. Well, yeah, they, they are not being reached. They're, they're not hearing the truth of what is taking place. And that allows people like a Doug Ford, like a Donald Trump, like a Pierre Polivier, like a fucking, you know, Maloney, like all these assholes and Erdogan, you name it, is what allows them to continue to do the really fucking horrific things they do that destroy so many fabrics of society. While at the same time, people are just kind of like, man, why, why, why are things so bad there right now? Why are things so fucked up in Alberta right now? They just passed all these really, really intense anti-LGBTQ plus laws. Uh, they're gutting the public health care system. They're absolutely destroying it. They're cutting all the funding from the fire care and prevention programs that are necessary when 2023 was a record year for fires in, in that area. Why are they getting away with this? Why aren't more people outraged? Why aren't more people doing a general strike? Why aren't they galvanized? Why aren't they hitting the streets? Because they don't know. And they don't know. And then, boom, in sweeps the other end, the well-funded Koch brothers media, the billionaires, and now Elon Musk, I'm sorry to say, who just proved he got an ROI on Twitter. All right? Like, legacy media can run all these stories. Lol, kek, so funny. He sucks at this. He destroyed the whole thing. It's a disaster. It's filled with Nazis. The, the brands don't want anything to do with it. The whole thing's a complete mess. Ha ha. Well, guess what he uh, he just bought? Uh, the number one social media platform that is still used by politicians. And as the uh, dictator of that platform, he now has the ability to manipulate and manipulate the people who use it in the ways that he sees fit. And he has been doing that. That's what he has been doing, and he's been doing it for a very long time. And look at this. He's actually got an effective tool right now to spread misinformation to the benefit. And this is to the benefit and the only person who's benefiting in all this at the end of the day, including Donald Trump. The rich, billionaires, the extreme wealthy. 
like of all the people to point the finger at in this last election guess who the democrats also cozy up to guess who the republicans also cozy up to who's got more billionaires oh the democrats have billionaires they're speaking at the dnc the the republicans have billionaires they're speaking at the the rnc look they're both two parties uh, highly funded by billionaires different billionaires in different techs uh you know or oil and gas sector sure but still these are two corporate parties getting this fucking non-stop amount of funding from uh, people who want to maintain their power capital and wealth and, and they're going to continue donald trump rightfully disgusts everyone but like he's an avatar of of what a person can get away with if, if they have every living privilege it's what he is it's it's why on one end liberals will be disgusted by him how can a convicted criminal become the president of the united states how can a man who has tried to steal an election become the president of the united states first person ever to become the president of the united states is a convicted criminal right before his sentencing is supposed to take place which now is never going to happen i'm sorry to say but that's just the reality of the world this man this serial rapist this 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 disgusting ass just every single fucking privilege concentrated into an orange nightmare well yeah this this is one thing you can just point out and be like he's the cause of all the problems he's the representation of all the problems that's what he is he is a living representation of all the problems how there's a separate system of justice for for people like him how, how there's a separate set, a set of rules for people like him how the world has to sit by and watch in horror as he exists as he exists and gets away with it just time after time and, and now to the highest possible degree there's there, there literally nothing that can stop him he he can die in office you know that that's it's, it's gonna be his chart he's the oldest man to ever become the president of the united states the only convicted criminal to ever become the president of the united states he tried to steal an election and look at that there he is he's he's now going to be the president and that's that's the reality it is that as much as you want to point out well yeah he's he's the cause of it all of it all of it he he is the fucking he's the avatar he's the representation of all of it it's capitalism this is disadvantages uh that they have are also many because there is few of them there is way more of us there are way more people in the fucking bottom 99% than, than the 1%. There's just an infinite more amount of us that can work together, that, that can use their own systems against them, that can use their own media empires and big tech and social media empires against them to spread this kind of information, to share this kind of information, and to work together in solidarity to continue to fight up against it and destroy it. Because that, that is what we all have to do. To, together because otherwise there will be a never-ending series of trumps in, until climate change consumes us all properly to in, in like I, I don't know if you were all watching me the day that doug ford in ontario uh he's the premier there he came forward uh the news of the day should have been all over that they had just gutted funding for mental health programs and, and by an enormous degree and that is going to be devastating for that province. And this is what the media should report on. That you have a responsibility to do this. Focus on this, please. All the major newspapers and the major media networks and, and all the legacy media over there were focused on him giving every single person in the province $200. That was the headlines. That that was the Toronto Star. That was the fucking the, the newscast clips that I could find. There were not video footage uh, of people inside parliament being like if you take away people's access to mental health if you limit the amount of resources people have for access to mental health this has devastating effects on the consequences how hypocritical of all of you to constantly vilify people with mental health when at the end of the day you aren't willing to fund the resources to help them you are sick that's what should be talked about that's what needs to be talked about that's why normies for the most part who aren't tapped into politics who are now googling days before you know uh, who, what are the policies of these two candidates kind of things well yeah they, they are not being reached they're, they're not hearing the truth of what is taking place and that allows people like a doug ford like a donald trump like a pierre polivier like a fucking you know maloney like all of these assholes and erdogan you name it is what allows them to continue to do the really fucking horrific things to do that destroy so many fabrics of society while at the same time people are just kind of like man 
why, why, why are things so bad there right now? Why are things so fucked up in Alberta right now? They just passed all these really, really intense anti-LGBTQ plus laws. Uh, they're gutting the public health care system. They're absolutely destroying it. They're cutting all the funding from the fire care and prevention programs that are necessary when 2023 was a record year for fires in, in that area. Why are they getting away with this? Why are more people outraged? Why are more people doing a general strike? Why aren't they galvanized? Why aren't they hitting the streets? Because they don't know. And they don't know, and then boom, in sweeps the other end, the well-funded Koch brothers media, the billionaires, and now Elon Musk, I'm sorry to say, who just proved he got an ROI on Twitter, all right? Like, legacy media can run all these stories. Lol, kek, so funny. He sucks at this. He destroyed the whole thing. It's a disaster. It's filled with Nazis. The, the brands don't want anything to do with it. The whole thing's a complete mess. Ha ha. Well, guess what he uh, he just bought? Uh, the number one social media platform that is still used by politicians. And as the uh, dictator of that platform, he now has the ability to manipulate and manipulate the people who use it in the ways that he sees fit. And he has been doing that. That's what he has been doing, and he's been doing it for a very long time. And look at this. He's actually got an effective tool right now to spread misinformation to the benefit. And this is to the benefit, and the only person who's benefiting in all this at the end of the day, including Donald Trump, the rich, billionaires, the extreme wealthy, like of all the people to point the finger at in this last election, guess who the Democrats also cozy up to? Guess who the Republicans also cozy up to? Who's got more billionaires? Oh, the Democrats have billionaires. They're speaking at the DNC. The the Republicans have billionaires. They're speaking at the the RNC. Look, they're both two parties, uh, highly funded by billionaires. Different billionaires in different techs, uh, you know, or oil and gas sector, sure. But still, these are two corporate parties getting this fucking nonstop amount of funding from uh, people who want to maintain. Their their power, capital, and wealth, and, and they're going to continue. Donald Trump rightfully disgusts everyone, but like he's an avatar of, of what a person can get away with if, if they have every living privilege. It's, it's what he is. It's, it's why on one end, liberals will be disgusted by him. How can a convicted criminal become the president of the United States? How can a man who has tried to steal an election become the president of the United States? First person ever to become the president of the United States is a convicted criminal right before his sentencing is supposed to take place, which now is never going to happen. I'm sorry to say, but that's just the reality of the world. This man, this serial rapist, this, this, this disgusting ass just every single fucking privilege concentrated into an orange nightmare well yeah this this is one thing you can just point out and be like he's the cause of all the problems he's the representation of all the problems that's what he is he is a living representation of all the problems how there's a separate system of justice for for people like him how, how there's a separate sit, a set of rules for people like him how the world has to sit by and watch in horror as he exists, as he exists and gets away with it. Just time after time. And, and now to the highest possible degree, there, there, there's literally nothing that can stop him. He he can die in office, you know? that that's It's, it's going to be his chart. He's the oldest man to ever become the president of the United States, the only convicted criminal to ever become the president of the United States. He tried to steal an election, and look at that. There he is. He's, he's now going to be the president, and that's that's the reality. It is that as much as you want to point out, well, yeah, he's he's the cause of it all of it. All of it. He he is the fucking. He's the avatar. He's the representation of all of it. It's capitalism. This is. Hey, if you'd like to unlock secret bonus episodes as well as uncensored content, go to Patreon.com/slash/TheServes. This show is produced by Anna Loves Riley, Arian McCarthy, Cheryl Alvarez, Comrade Junkie, Doug Caddy, Everything Important, Hagbard Celine, Jimmy Sombrero, Multimondi, Omni, Political Puppy, Preston Kroll, Quiet185, Riley and Anna, Roller Dragon, Cernicus, Stellar Gwynn, Sebastian Demmel, Travis McClinton, Trincell, Words Greenwood with additional support coming from all of these amazing human beings right here.